Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Inspirational Sundays. Today, we are picking up from where I left off Genesis chapter 31, titled Jacob Runs from Laban. Let's begin. Verse 1 Jacob heard that Laban's sons were complaining. Jacob is now a rich man, and he got everything he owns from our father. Jacob also noticed that Laban was not as friendly as he had been before. One day, the Lord said, Jacob, go back to your relatives in the land of your ancestors, and I will be with you. Jacob sent for Rachel and Leah to meet him in the pasture where he kept his sheep, and he told them, Your father isn't as friendly with me as he used to be. But the God my ancestors worshipped has been on my side. You know that I have worked hard for your father, and that he keeps cheating me by changing my wages time after time. But God has protected me. When your father said that the speckled sheep would be my wages, all of them were speckled. And when he said the spotted ones would be mine, all of them were spotted. That's how God has taken sheep and goats from your father and given them to me. Once, when the flocks were mating, I dreamt, I dreamed that all the rams were either spotted or speckled. Then God's angels called me by name, I answered, and said, Notice that all the rams are either spotted or speckled. I know everything Laban is doing to you, and I am the God you worshipped at Bethel. When you poured olive oil on a rock and made a promise to me, leave here at once and return to the land where you are born. Rachel and Leah said to Jacob, There's nothing left for us to inherit from our father. He treats us like foreigners and has even cheated us out of the, the bride price that should have been ours. So do whatever God tells you to do. Even the property God took from our father and gave to you really belongs to us and our children. Then, uh, you didn't know that, but we read this already. And see, it's coming back to you. Oh, oh, I just realized, don't forget. I've been through something with my father, folks. I can relate to this. I think I'm going to cut this part out. No, because it's not the fact that they've been cheated. They were cheated out of the bride price, too. He took everything. He took, he took everything. Trust me, folks. That sounds familiar to me. I'm not pointing any shots. I might just leave this in, okay? Because it's not a joke. Like, I've lived through something like this where my father has taken from me and my wife and children. I won't go into details. Don't know if I'm going to even keep this in. But anyways, let's continue on. <laughs> but you see, it's not a joke. The Bible is not a joke. These things are true. Foreigners. Yeah, so they were being mistreated. Yeah, no longer daughters. No longer daughters. Yeah. And after Jacob has worked so long, he kept prolonging their time. Oh yeah. The, because he's trying to he's trying he, he probably wants to work him until he ends up either he gets fed up and leaves them and leaves everything and just goes. You know or he stays saying? there and works till he dies and he doesn't get anything. You know that saying, um, you want your cake and eat it too? Mm -hmm. Because he wants them to stay, but he doesn't want to no, yeah, well, because he knows they're, they're not just his daughters anymore. And now they're the guys, they're Jacob's wife now. No, but see, again, I can relate to this. Okay, we won't go into details. Maybe one day, I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers because God is good regardless, no matter what anybody does. But I can relate to this very well. <laughs> um... Uh, verse 17 then Jacob his wives and his children got on camels and left northern Syria for the home of his father Isaac in Canaan Jacob took along all his flocks herds and other property before Rachel left she stole the household idols which Laban was out when uh, sorry while Laban okay again verse 19 before Rachel left she stole the household idols while Laban was out shearing his sheep. Jacob tricked Laban, the Aramean, by not saying that he intended to leave. When Jacob crossed the Euphrates River and headed for the hill country of Gilead, he took with him everything he owned, which was pre pretty much, all, you know, probably all 
the majority of Laban's things. Um, Laban catches up with Jacob, verse 22. Three days later, Laban found out that Jacob had gone, so he took some of his relatives along and chased after Jacob for seven days. That number seven, there it is again, man. Uh, seven days before catching up with him in the hill country of Galid. But God appeared to Laban in a dream that night and warned, don't say a word to Jacob. Don't make a threat or a promise. Jacob had set up camp in the hill country of Galid when Laban and his relatives came and set up camp in another part of the hill country. Laban went to Jacob and said, look what you've done. You've tricked me and run off with my daughters. Wrong. He ran off with his wives. Okay, that he worked for, worked hard for. Um, uh, 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 run off with my daughters. Sorry, uh, let's go again. Verse 26. And said, look what you have done. You've tricked me and run off with my daughters like a kidnapper. See, again, I have to stop there. Incorrect. He got, he worked for his wives. They're his. They're not your daughters anymore. They're his. They're supposed to leave. That again is in the word. They're supposed to leave. Because now he feels like, oh, you're doing this without my, you know, but he was treating them like foreigners. So again, uh, unfortunately, I could relate to this. I'm not trying to throw jabs. I'm really not. It's just like, it's funny because I can relate to it. You know, it, it's yeah. Okay. Uh, verse 27. Why do you sneak away without telling me? I would have given you a going away party. Lie. Lie. Uh, with si with singing and with music and tambourines and harps. Lie. Um, verse 28. You didn't even give me a chance to kiss my own grandchildren and daughters goodbye. That was really foolish. No, it wasn't. It was very smart. I could easily hurt you. No, you couldn't. But the God your father worshipped has warned me not to make any threats or promises. It still kind of sounds like you made a threat. You still wanted to put that in there. I believe that if nothing happened to him, which we'll continue reading on, he got lucky. God let him off because he's still, that's still a threat. I could easily hurt you. There was no need to say that. God said, hey, don't say anything to him. And he still did. So you're lucky. Some people get lucky. I, I think God, you know, merciful. He gives chances. So Laban, you know, tell him thank you. Um... Uh, immediately with the snap of a finger all thanos style okay we're not gonna <laughs> i know i had to throw that in there um i could easily hurt you but the god your father worshipped has warned me not to make any threats or promises i can understand why you were eager to return to your father but why did you have to steal my idols now this this is where it's tricky because he didn't but we know who did Jacob answered, I left secretive, secretly because I was afraid you would take your daughters from me by force, which he would. If you find that any one of us has taken your idols, I'll have that person killed. Let your relatives be witnesses. Show me what belongs to you and you can take it back. Jacob did not realize that Rachel had stolen the household idols. Laban searched the tents of Jacob, Leah, and the two servant women, but did not find the idols. Then he went to Rachel's tent. She had already hidden them in the cushion she used as a saddle and was sitting on it. <laughs> Laban searched everywhere and did not find them. Rachel said, Father, please don't be angry with me for not getting up. I'm having my time of the month. Laban kept on searching but still did not find the idols. Jacob became very angry and said to Laban, what have I done wrong? Have I committed some crime? Is that why you hunted me down? After searching through everything I have, did you find anything of yours? If so, put it here where your relatives and mine can see it. Then we can decide what to do. Verse 38, in all 20 years that I've worked for you, 20 years, I, he was supposed to work seven years. He was supposed to work seven years for Rachel. He tricked him, gave him Leah. He worked another seven years. That's 14. And then he got Rachel. And then he still ended up working another, what, what was that, six years? What? Come on, Laban. Laban, Laban. More like lame man. That might cut that. 
you never know um verse 38 in all 20 years that i've worked for you not one of your sheep or goats have had or sorry not one of your sheep or goats has had a miscarriage and i've never eaten even one of your rams if a wild animal killed one of your sheep or goats i paid for it myself wow you're going above and beyond bro respect for that in fact you demanded the full pr oh he demanded the full price and a wild animal is the one that destroyed the 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 sheep or the goat and he okay i mean verse 40 i sweated every day and i couldn't sleep at night because of the cold mm, i had to work 14 of these 20 long years same thing i was saying uh verse 41 i had to work 14 of these 20 long years to earn your two daughters and another six years to buy your sheep and goats well that explains it okay during that time you kept changing my wages if the fearsome god worshipped by abraham and my father isaac had not been on my side you would have sent me away without a thing that's exactly what me and honey were here talking about and my wife we call her honey it is tintin temptation you know tanisha uh honey you know when you get to know her better she's honey uh here we go i lost my i lost my verse uh 42 if the fearsome god worshipped by abraham and my father isaac had not been on my side you would have sent me away without a thing but god saw my hard work and he knew the trouble i was in so he helped me then last night he told you how wrong you were but laban still didn't care he still came in threat you know uh verse 43 laban uh sorry titled jacob and laban make an agreement laban said to jacob leah and rachel are my daughters and their children belong to me all these sheep you are taking are really mine too right there it should have just been struck by a lightning bolt and i wouldn't even be shocked i wouldn't have been shocked he just retract he just he just retracted everything I'm holding it back. Again, I ain't ruffling feathers. It just sucks. It just truly sucks that I can relate to this as well. But God is on my side, just like Jacob. Yes, I feel good, confident to say that. God's always taking care of me and my family, regardless of how much I can relate to this story. Uh, here we go. I lost my... Okay, I'm going to go back again. Verse 43. Laban said to Jacob, Leah and Rachel are my daughters, and their children belong to me. That doesn't make sense because Jacob is their father, so they can't belong to you, layman. Sorry, I mean Laban. Um, all these sheep you are taking are really mine too in fact everything you have belongs to me but there is nothing i can do to keep my daughters and their children so i am ready to make an agreement with you and we will pile up some large rocks here to remind us of the agreement i don't know man i would have slapped laban in the face bro i know that's not what god would want you to do that's why jacob didn't do it me personally i would have i would have thrown them hands bro uh verse 45 after jacob had set up a large rock he told his men to get some more rocks and pile them up next to it then jacob and laban ate a meal together beside the rocks laban named the pile of rocks now i'm i don't know if it's the silent j or not but i'm gonna give it a shot jagar sahadutha or yegar sahadutha the j could be silent i feel like the j is silent um but again i hope i didn't just butcher that although Oh, so it might be Jaeger, Jaegar, Jaegar Sahadutha, if the J is a Y, because that's usually what it is. I feel like it figured it wouldn't be J, like a J sound, like Jaegar or something, but mm -hmm, in that, in that uh, alphabet. But Jacob named it Galit, which is a much better name. Laban said to Jacob, this pile of rocks will remind us of our agreement that's why this place was named galit laban also said this pile of rocks means that the lord will watch us both while we are apart from each other so the place was also named mizpah he's just trying to get a little bit of jacob's blessing there that's what he's trying to do after all that everything that happened he's still trying to take some still trying to take some 
Then Laban said, If you mistreat my daughters or marry other women, I may not know about it. But remember, God is watching us. That's good. I respect that. Still kind of a threat. He's still trying to, he's trying to sh sh show some type of uh, authority in this whole situation where he has none. You know, that's just, that's how I feel about it. But yeah, if you mistreat my daughters or marry other women, I may not know about it. But remember, God is watching us both. He's watching us. Both this pile of rocks and this large rock have been set up between us as a reminder. I must never go past them to attack you and you must never come past them to attack me. My father Nahor, your grandfather Abraham, and their ancestors all worship the same God, and he will make sure that we each keep the agreement. Then Jacob made a promise in the name of the fearsome God his father Isaac had worshipped. Jacob killed an animal and offered it as a sacrifice there on the mountain, and he invited his men to eat with him. After the meal, they spent the night on the mountain. Early the next morning, Laban kissed his daughters and grandchildren goodbye. Then he left to go back home. Wow. I wanted to do another chapter, guys, but I'm going to leave it there. Uh, the time has gone. So Genesis chapter 31. Wow. I mean, it's a it, it was a roller coaster of emotions, especially for me there, relating to so much things uh, reading about. And then honestly, just getting a little ticked off at Laban. And I know the story, but, you know, reading over it and going over and over in it, things just kind of stand out to you more. And uh, just in case you're reading from another version, I'm reading from the contemporary English version. Uh, uh, it, so the wording is a little bit simplified a little. Uh, um, easier reading, easier understanding. And uh, yeah, but you can always correspond with the King James versions. To be honest, we again, me and my family, we read every single night. And we have come across one and two uh, 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 things that were input, inputted that were one or two things that are in the the contemporary english version that i'm reading from now that are not in the king james versions one that they said for example uh uh, uh the two uh the two uh, uh criminals on the cross beside jesus when he was nailed to the cross they were both basically laughing and cursing at him when the king james version we know that it was only one of them and the other one said he wants to be with jesus and jesus said you will be there right so there's he always correspond with different versions the king james version is my favorite version to be honest but you know reading with the kids and everything like that they don't really get a lot of they thou those and you know thou art and all those things so it's good to correspond between versions um just to find those differences there yeah uh, because i like the they thous and those and thou arts. i like it i like the old english i like that you know so even when I'm personally reading, I go back to the King James Version to read that. I, I, I'm reading this for the kids and for other people who, again, may not like the they, thou's, and <laughs> thou arts. But there you know? are really good versions that mm -hmm. really correspond uh, closest to. Remember, every Bi uh, the Bible is translated from a different language. Mm -hmm. so different interpretation. So everybody um, is trying to translate it. We'll get something different. Mm -hmm. This is why you have so many different versions of the Bible. Oh, maybe that's why the contemporary right. is a little different. The translation was a bit different. But the, okay. you know, the first translation of the Bible, mm. just for, for fact, was the Geneva Bible. Oh, the, first the first translation? translation the Geneva Bible. Okay, I gotta check that one out. Oh, excuse me. Okay, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed another episode of Inspirational Sundays. We are signing off until the following Sunday. I'll try to get more in on the following episodes and still trying to figure out when I can throw them in the week as well. As always, I'm your humble Picasso. Thanks for joining in today. If you enjoyed today's video, if you had a good time reading, if you were as ticked off as Laban as I was, or if you could relate like I could, be sure to leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Stay blessed. Pray. Stay strong. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. That's not really what I was waiting for, but I was thinking of something else and it wasn't coming, but that still worked out. Okay, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Your humblest Picasso as always. Peace. I'm out.